Let's discuss this Pac-12 potential boycott that came up over the weekend. Uh, former Arizona State quarterback Rudy Carpenter, now a podcast and radio host, spoke out on Twitter about some Pac-12 players who are planning to boycott the 2020 season if a list of demands are not met. Uh, these are the tweets that he sent out. He said, uh, Pac-12 players, to, uh, excuse me, Pac-12 football players have created a list of demands for the Pac-12 universities to take into consideration. If the demands are not addressed or complied with, the players are threatening to sit out the season. There is significant support growing among all 12 teams with 50 or more players on many teams in support of the actions demands list. The initial idea was to create a player's union. They decided time did not allow for this and figured the best way to create the change they want is to boycott the seasons. Uh, things they are asking for is 50-50 revenue share, which, I mean, we'll see what happens there. Uh, six, how, do, how, do, how, do you, how do you do that? I have no college? idea. No idea. How does that even work? Uh, six years of insurance upon graduation, better COVID-19 testing and protocols, et cetera, et cetera. The player-led group is being spearheaded at Cal Football, and they have been holding phone calls with other Pac-12 teams. There is some kind of players-only meeting or vote that will take place shortly. Uh, I haven't seen anything else about this, but this is... What revenue are we counting? Uh, you got me, because there's not going to be a lot of it this season. I guess well, it would be television. But even TV deals, but like, it, that, that is a bold statement. Here's what I really like a lot. Here's what I love. I love when somebody says, I demand that you take into consideration. Like, yeah. mm, okay. Okay, you don't demand that I actually do anything with this, right? You just demand that I really think about it and consider it? <laughs> You're telling like some it. of the most ruthless people in the country, those who run college athletics, who well, give and, and, zero dams about the actual college athlete, yeah, to take into consideration. Now, I do like that these guys are, I mean – they haven't officially become a union, but what is a union? Uh, just a group of folks. Like, you don't have to have some board, and you don't have to have some legal committee and make everybody pay a due and get a card and a badge and have titles, man. You're just all on one page. You all come together, and you say, we want this, or we're not going to play. And if you choose not to, and they can't replace you, then you can probably get whatever you want. If they can replace you, hmm, it's going to be then tough. you're in trouble. Yeah, but I'm, Michael, I'm, I'm for I'm for most of this. I have no idea how, about the revenue I'm all share or the That's safety weird. stuff. And I really like I actually really like the insurance thing. When you leave college as a college athlete, they think you should have carryover insurance. Maybe we can negotiate that six years to three. Okay, yeah. I'm okay with that. Like we can have a conversation here. I'd be fine with that. We'll we'll provide you some type of health insurance when you leave the school for what you've provided for. Is that there's got to be a way to do that? A split of revenue, I, I want the kids to get paid. I don't. I wouldn't even know how to do that because I don't even know how you count the licensing revenue that goes out when you have 900 million tiny stores that sell your licensed apparel. Well, and, and on top of that, I mean, it just it, let's take it to a whole different level. Uh, these are all tax-exempt status universities. I mean, they, yeah. this is a federal thing. You're going to have to change the way that revenue is looked at uh, yeah. At a federal level, so this yeah. is not up to the schools, really. So I'm, I'm with you on the I'm with you on the safety and, and the health and and, and and the COVID stuff. I'm 100 percent with you. We can have the conversation about the insurance. I'm, I really like that way of thinking. I'm I'm all for how can we give something to these kids outside of what I would call a bullshit scholarship because I see what they're actually worth. Yep. And 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 let's let's actually give them something physical that we can hand them even when they leave here. I'm good with all of those things. I don't know how to do the revenue. I like what these guys are doing. Uh, Michael said sitting out only hurts the players. The Pac-12 and the NCAA are not going to hurt. Uh, they'll find the kids to fill the jerseys. And he's probably right about that. I mean, there there lies the issue with football is there's always been, because that sport is so loved, there's always been just a, 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 just a churn of kids wanting to play. Yeah. No, you're, you're definitely right. Uh, Michael said, I agree with him getting some of those demands. We all hate the NCAA, but there has to be a better way of going about it. Sitting out is not going to change anything. Uh, yes and no. I mean, it, I mean, if you get some star players to sit, yeah, then, you, at then least, you, you at least draw the attention. If you're a Clemson, and right now Trevor Lawrence and all these superstars that are on that team, and you're Ohio State, and you're, and you're looking at a chance at a national title, 
and you lose four or five of your best players that think we're golden, we're moonwalking into the NFL with our resume right now, we don't have to play this season anyway, let's sit out for a cause, that would cost those teams millions and millions of dollars in revenue just by missing out on the playoffs and and potentially crushing a dream season, a national championship season. It, it would be worth it to those institutions to say, hey, we might have something here. It, if now, you're so Cal, you however. Money, well, this, Cal, not, not so much, but you look at bowl revenue. Yeah. How many of these teams are regular bowl comp, you know, com- competitors in the Pac-12? They still get a lot of bowl money. They get a shitload of bowl money. And Rose Bowl money is big, okay? Oh, it's definitely that, but that, that's, it, that's split up between all the universities anyway. That's, that's the way bowls are done. So as long as you've got enough bowl teams to fill up your bowl allotment, you're going to get... But there you know, lies the problem. What if they don't, if all these kids sit, they're not going to have that. No, if, if all of them sit, then yeah. Uh, Matt Miller said, unless you're a locked-in first-rounder, you should play. And then Damian Estrada said, has there ever been a college football lockout? And the answer to that is no. Here, here's the no. problem that the players would run into. If you sit out, if you go ahead and decide that you're going to sit out, and you sit out one game, and they're, you know the institution says, okay, let's have a discussion, I can't meet all of your demands, and they continue to sit out, they can pull the scholarship. And the kid doesn't get yeah. to go to class, he doesn't get a degree, he doesn't... It, the ones that are not first round draft picks, that's where the problem comes in because you need the degree. And you can always go back to whatever college you want to and pay for it yourself if and you we want. Know, hang on, and we know how the NFL is, by the way, too. If you're seen as a troublemaker, yep. you, you better have Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields type talent. Oh, because you're not making on the field if you don't. Well, you, so you got first round draft pick. Yeah. But you're a troublemaker. You you're not you're no longer a third round pick. You're a nobody pick. Yeah, you you might be a seventh round pick, and that's just so that they might take a chance on you to see how you act. Because they need to fill the roster and they want to win over everything. But if you're if they think you're a troublemaker, you're gonna fall and it's gonna cost you a lot of money too. Yeah. So that there, you know, you've got some risk there. But at the end of the day, man, nothing risk, nothing rewarded. If 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 you think if you think you got the goods, if you think you have the collection of bodies to do it. Yeah, Michael said okay, very true. Because right now, let's let's say twenty people from every one of these football teams decided to sit from all from all twelve teams in the Pac-12. Twenty all from every school. It'd be really hard for them to fill a roster to even play a game at all with with that, especially if it's more upper class and lower class guys sitting. They can't just bring in a herd of kids last minute. That's not how college works, man. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if they're if they doing it right this second, then... If, they, if, they, if, it, if it's one of those things where we're going to start playing in September or October because you're packed well and you're pushing things back, then and, and you pulled the plug right now, they can't fill that team in the next month, two months. No, you're so, right. So they wouldn't be able to play at all, so whatever revenue they were going to bring in is gone. Michael said, very true, but I'm not sure you're going to get a Trevor Lawrence who has probably been paid already to, to risk his future for this. And Matt Miller said, a lot of ki- or if a lot of kids do sit, we will pretty much be watching glorified high school football. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It, it'll just be Well, with, now the uh, thing about Trevor jerseys. Lawrence is, see, maybe it is easier to get him because he's already been paid. And that's all cash money that you can't get back. Possibly. Um, but it, it, we also know that his biggest payday is going to be First round draft pick. Like we know Josh Rosen had all the talent in the world and but he he kinda liked to cause some some stirs. Mm, Josh Rosen had potential to have all the talent in the world. It, I think he's still talented. I think he's still incredibly he's not talented. Close to some of these guys that, that are top that are he was not a true number one draft pick. Now I yeah. liked him a lot, but because I liked him doesn't mean that he was gonna be great. I've liked a lot of guys that were bust. Yeah, but he he was kind of like he was seen, especially after his junior year. He would have been a top five pick. Yes. And then after his senior year, he started coming out. But that and talking has nothing about to do with these... the fact that he cared about stances and making a difference in the right. world, and everything to do with how he played. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We we can we can so, agree so to disagree. Example, I think that had something to do with. If he sits out after his junior after his junior year and don't play his senior year. Because of this stance, it would have helped his draft status. It, it, it might have. I mean, who knows? Who knows? It absolutely would have. The hype that was coming off of him after his junior year was crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. He played his senior year, and and then he gets taken after Josh out. I mean, it was just a, you know, it was just a mess. 
just a mess. Either way, uh, it, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this. Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? I'm interested to see it fan out, and I'm and I'm good with a lot of the things they're asking for. I got they they, they need to get away from the revenue. I know. I, look, I want kids to get paid. But you got to find a way to get them paid without without revenue splits in college. You're just not getting that. Yeah, you're not getting that at all. Uh, Michael said we all want the same thing: pay the kids. The problem is how the hell we, uh, do we beat the man, the NCAA? And uh, Matt Miller said Rosen has gotten two raw deals with the Cards and the Dolphins. Yeah, he he got bad spots in uh. In I, both I completely agree with both of those. The, the problem is, is he he didn't handle either one of them well at all. No, he kind of whined and bitched his way through them, and that turns him off to the other thirty teams. And and honestly, like had he just shown up and played and balled out and won the jobs, yep. It and even be- if he loses the jobs, but he works his ass off constantly, it'd have been different. But these guys that. Everybody in the league knows who's working and who's not. The assistant coaches talk. The, I'm not talking about head coaches. I'm not talking about coordinators. I'm talking about managers talk. Other players in the locker room talk. They know who's staying late and working with young guys who are willing to stay late and who's not. They know who's bitching about not playing and who's trying to win the spot. Yeah, I can't speak for what's happened to Josh Rosen. I was the guy touting him, saying I would have taken him over all those guys in that draft outside of Lamar Jackson. Oh yeah, I was honest about that. I was open about that. If I had to take one of those quarterbacks in that draft, and I wouldn't look, and it couldn't be Lamar, it would have been him. I was wrong on that. Yeah. Now yeah. I don't know that any of them worked a damn. By the way, <laughs> I've been right on that so far. So far, so far. All right, let's uh, let's hit our last topic of the day. 